Hey, what's up? This is John McEntee here from the Rock Fantasy Files, and I'm here with an old school as fuck cast. Um, really, really killer show. We're going to talk about the kind of old school scene between New Jersey, New York, and Pittsburgh, and how it all kind of came together. It's kind of an interesting story, and just, um, you know, everyone's kind of just, you know, done some killer stuff. It's, it would be hella killer cool anyway. So, um, I'll just introduce the cast. If you guys are posers and don't know, we have Mark Mastro here from Rotrevor, the man himself. So it's really awesome. Have Henry Veggie in here from Revenant. Um, you know, it's fucking Revenant, dude. You know, it's killer. <laughs> um, Sharon Burkowski from. Uh, That's not how you say. My name. I know. I I get I always get nervous on here. I fuck everything up, you know. But anyway, um, from Durkada. See, I couldn't even think of Durkada, you know. That you way, said that right. Yeah, good. So, I appreciate it. Uh, Don Crosley from Nunslaughter, and then we have Ross and Bob from Immolation. So, what's up, everybody? How you doing? What's, what's up, up, everybody? Good to be here. Yep. What's cool. up, everyone? Okay, cool. Well, I guess we'll start with Henry on this. Um, let's just, you know, just talk about, um, I guess, how you first kind of got your connection with Sharon from, you know, back in the day. I, all That's right, so John and I were in the band, and I was already friends with Ross and Bob. I had met Ross and Bob through Andrew from Rigor Mortis, so we all we all knew each other. And I was dating a girl from Connecticut, and my parents were out of work and they were like stressed. And I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to Canada," and I was like 17 years old. And my parents were like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." <laughs> And which was weird because they were often pretty strict, but I guess they were just just too wigged out. So I went to the airport in New Haven or what's that other city up there? Hartford. And we flew up to Canada and I we had tickets to see Anvil headlining with Sacrifice as the opener. And I was totally stoked. I was I'm crazy about Sacrifice. I was, records are amazing everyone loves them and uh we went to the show it was on what's the name of that main street in toronto is it queen street queens yeah i think so yeah. yeah yeah and uh i i got there it was cold and we had a everyone had to go outside for a bit we were hanging out with the band for a bit and we all had to go outside <laughs> and i walked outside and the, I was like, man, it's really cold in Canada in November. I was like, kind of, and I tried. Yeah, it was, okay. I think it was, was it November or December? Yeah, it was pretty. I was like, man, this is colder. And I didn't think it was that far. And I hadn't been to Canada in forever. And I remember I was like trying to get like behind people and stuff. And I turned around and I just see this pretty girl and she's smoking a cigarette and she's metal. And I was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> I was like, I'm Henry. Being suave. Hey, I know. I remember that. And I was like, you know, in my mind, I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to like schmooze and hit on you, but I'm just, I just, that wasn't I'm me. You. <laughs> that that wasn't was me. me. And we just started talking. I think you had a, did you have a That's... death jacket? Oh, yeah, that was me. Yeah. You had a death jacket. I, I, I remember, <laughs> I remember this story different. Um, and we were outside and you were smoking, you had a death jacket, and we just hit up a, we just hit it up, hit it off, started talking. And, I, thought uh, we, I thought it was we were backstage. We, oh no, no, you were correct because I remember Rob. Okay, yeah, go keep going, keep going. And we were at definitely outside. His I remember memory is impeccable. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if he says it, it was outside, we were outside. Okay. And there are things I don't remember <laughs> the, all of the details, but I was like. Like, oh, you like death. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm here with so-and-so and we're hanging out. And uh, we exchanged information and demos next. And then before you knew it, like, we came out there, John and Bob and Ross and I, drew, well, John, Ross and Bob drove out there for a Revenant show. I think it did and, Tim Scott go with us? And, yes, Tim, and Tim went with you. And I went in a separate car with, with the other guys. And we played in Wexford. Was it Wexford? I thought it was Green Tree. Yeah, it was somewhere weird like that. The Green Tree Fire oh, Hall. Oh, the Fire Hall, yeah. yeah. Fire Hall. Okay. 
Is that I live in the fire hall. That was no, a slug word. Slug word. Yep. Totally. We don't, we don't don't that. The, the hotel we stayed at, that Econo Lodge in Wexford. Econo Lodge. Ego Bagels. Ego Bagels. 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 Just thinking that. <laughs> totally, dude. So funny. So when I lived in Pittsburgh, jump ahead 12 years. I had to go meet my professor who was directing my PhD project at his house. And I got off of that exit and there was the fucking Econo Lodge. And I was like, holy wow. shit. Full circle. <laughs> Perfect. See, I, I, I remember like this slightly different um, like with me going up to Canada, I was just, I love sacrifice. And there was two times sacrifice was supposed to play city limits in Pittsburgh. And I can't remember what happened the first time. Um, the second time I, uh, they broke down, but their manager, Ray, they called him Black Metal Ray. And this guy, Aaron, who used to videotape their shows, showed up at city limits. And, and he was like, unfortunately, the band's not going to make it because they're broke down somewhere. Um, but I met, you know, Ray and, you know, I was like, I'm a huge sacrifice fan. And he would actually call me and let me know like upcoming sacrifice shows. Like, I mean, he was like, I, I no other manager that I have ever from bands that I know ever did that, but he would be like, Hey, just letting you know, you know, sacrifice is having a, a show booked on this, you know, even before it was announced and all that. So there were a couple of tents where, uh, Terry and I were going to go up and then last minute something someone bailed on us whoever had the car and so this particular one I was like I gotta see Sacrifice you know and it was like it seemed like it'd be a great show so Aaron who I just met you know like they were like him and Ray hanging out at City Limits parking lot you know I was like yeah you can stay with me whatever I'll take you to the show so I really didn't know him you know, so my parent, well, my, we didn't tell my dad, but my mom's like, what do you mean? You're going to go fly to Toronto and stay with someone you don't even know. And I'm like, yeah, it's all cool. It's all cool. So, you know, I, I go up and, um, you know, go to the show. But then I remember after the show, that's where I met you. And I was thinking it was backstage. I remember Aaron saying, hey, do you want to meet the band? You know, because his friend, and I was like, oh, my God, yeah. And then you were back there with Kelly. Um, but it, but it wasn't backstage. I mean, it must have been back behind the building because now I remember I have a picture of like Rob sitting, you know, be in the back of his van, the, the van or whatever. So yeah, it would have been outside. But I remember distinctly, like you were like, yeah, I'm in a death metal band, and I'm like, I'm in a death metal band, and we were like, what's your band, you know? And, and we started like connecting. <clears throat> And then you uh, specifically said like, oh, you got to like check out my friend's band from Yonkers. And that was the first time that I ever heard Yonkers in New York. And I'm like, Yonkers? Yonkers. Like, what's Yonkers? Lost and in Yonkers. Like, yeah. Yonkers. <laughs> I know, yeah and, and you're like, oh, no, it's a, it, it's a, you know, you know, it's a town in New York or whatever. They were like, they're called Immolation. They're so fucking heavy. And that was like, like the beginning of like, you know, all of us getting to meet each other and all that. And then okay. as soon as like, as soon as you got home, I remember I was like, we were talking on the phone, um, you know, quite often and getting this, the show set up. And then was it Bob and Ross, was it you two came along for the ride? Yeah, yeah, we, we John, uh, John and Veg invited us out to the show and that was our first, road trip outside of Yonker, outside of New York, really, yeah. for a show like that, you know? So we said, yeah, we'll, we'll go, definitely. It sounds like a blast. So we took the ride out with John, and it was Tim. Tim was with us, John? Yeah, Tim Scott was with us, too. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it was four of us, yeah, and we drove out in John's <laughs> old car. Uh, in an old red, red yeah, uh, yep, Oldsmobile. Yep, 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 yep. yep. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, that's where we met all you guys, you know? We met yeah. you, Sharon, we met Don, and we met Mark. And I think, Ma Mark, you didn't you interview us at that show? Yeah. <clears throat> at the time, I was I was doing Infernal Bleeding uh, that's scene. Right. That's right. That's that's where I met up with you. Yep. Uh, what, what was that club called again? Where was that at? Fire Hall. It was a fire hall. It was the Green Tree Fire Hall. Yeah. Green Tree Fire Hall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. Yeah, I had, 
Yeah, I had the zine going at the time. And, that's uh, right. Yeah, we just, uh, I think that's where we met you guys, you know? Yeah. I yeah, remember you totally doing the interview, interview with yeah. a Bob at the uh, merch table, and I still got yeah, that cassette yeah. of the interview. It's just cla- it's classic. <laughs> no, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that, that was that, like that's sh- like our first road yeah. trip, pretty much. Out of the yeah, area. yeah, it was. So it was. Yes, that, that show at the fire hall was was it? I think it was Eviction, Doom Watch. Yeah, Doom Watch. That's right. Uh, Sathanas. Satanist played the first time we saw right. Satanist. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Was Satan? Half Life, Half Life, and Slugworth. Yeah. Slug was, it was like a, for us it was a huge huge show wow. actually hank oh. how did that show do we we got on because of slugworth didn't we or was it somebody yeah, else I, that hooked us up i yeah it was slugworth because i think i was talking to i think it was dan ferguson or something and and yeah it was something we you know we got revenant on, on the revenant on the show i don't yeah. know how and it was weird because we had to go to the encyclopedia, the computer brain. Oh, the whole set. And our friend Jason subbed. And I think Johnny played bass on the song because we did like a Celtic Frost. Yeah, cover. I'm not Circle sure of Tyrants, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, like, it was weird. We had like, we were rotating bass guitars out and it was a mess. It was just. <laughs> It was it was a good show though. I mean, I remember the room being packed, and we were like, "Wow, yeah. this is a great crowd." Yeah, so we, we were on the way. Yeah. yeah, it was sick, <laughs> but it was cool. We got to meet all you guys there. I remember. I mean, we we spoke to Don at the merch table. I remember Don, you had on like a carcass shirt at the time, like old school carcass shirt. I remember that like like vividly. I was like, "Oh, that's sick! This dude got a carcass shirt." You know. And then we started talking. You're like, "Damn, yeah, I'm in mean, slaughter," and we were talking about stuff. And yeah, it was cool. So we made all those connections well, back then. I think that's when I first found out that <clears throat> you were you that rigor mortis no longer existed, and you were starting where you were. It, yeah. That was going on the, the immolation. Right. Right. Yeah, that would have been probably the first. I mean. I don't remember, was our demo even out then? I don't remember the timeline. Our demo came out in like May or June of 88. So I don't remember yeah. where this was. And I forgot what date, yeah, I forgot what the date was of the show. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah but that, yeah, we had, uh, yeah. I mean, that had, that was only a few months, you know, news. <laughs> that yeah, happened exactly. in like February. So it was only a few months. <laughs> yeah, ha- well, it was cold out when we went there. Cause remember I slipped with my car and I smashed my rim on the side of the uh, Econo Lodge little uh, park, whatever it was, the um, the curb there, yeah. and because yeah, uh, I, 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 cause I have photos of us like fixing my trying to fix my my tire in front of the Econo Lodge there. <laughs> I actually still have like a coaster from that Econo Lodge or something like that. Great. <laughs> that was in the year just because I was like. Yeah, wow, I traveled and we played a show and I want to re- something to remember this by. So I, I took like something really pathetic, like a napkin. Or- <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're missing the important, the, the important uh, part where you were offered to sleep like donkeys on hay or straw. Or oh, hay. it was like a yeah. construction site in that kid's basement. I mean, yeah. we appreciate the yeah. offer. I think it was one of the guys from Slugworth and like, hey, you could crash on my place. And we, we kind of went down into the, into the basement. It was like literally like a construction zone. It was like, yeah, I think they were us. building the stage or well, something. It, yeah, there was something going on down there. We were like, yeah, maybe not. We'll just go get a hotel room and chill. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like an evil major scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it, was, it was pretty funny. But anyway, but it was a, it was a great show and a great memory because we got to meet oh, all no you worries. guys and make those connections. And obviously, we, we're still all connected today. So that's it says something. <laughs> I know John uh, just he texted me yeah, some very p- pictures from that time. Uh, John, those pictures he texted me recently. Oh my God, those were his. Oh, totally. <laughs> they were like, we were like in the O'Connell Lodge, like having breakfast, and like we're all at the table, just herbing out. It was just oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that, and uh, those Eggo bagels have been like Best. a staple forever. Like every time we see each other, we think about those Eggo bagels <laughs> totally. there. You know, we're like, no, totally. It's like we remember what we ate like 32 years ago. I can't right. remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. <laughs> I remember that vividly. It wasn't an Eggo bagel. That's why. <laughs> Yeah, we're good as hell. Um, but, but it's weird because like with Don, like when I met Don, um, it, I didn't actually meet him, but I remember. You remember when everyone would go to the VIP parking lot in Bridgeville, and you were, you know, everyone would just hang out yeah. in the parking lot. 
and Don, uh, you were with Lisa at the time, and I was hanging out with my friends, and I would just see this guy like with long hair and a creator, you know, vest, like or like who's that guy? Like, like that's creator, but I was too shy to like approach you, you know, like to be like, hey, like, you know. And then uh, I saw you later at shows. I'm like, here's that guy from the VIP. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> the VIP was the the dance lounge. We did, I didn't really go in it. it was just on no, the, I know. Yeah, we didn't go right. inside. It was like you know we uh, <laughs> yeah. just hung out in the parking lot. He's like, sure you didn't. Don, Don's <laughs> like, just to be clear, I wasn't yeah. in the VIP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we just didn't. That was like the the, the the thing back then was hanging out in parking lots. I mean, and then the police would come and sure. and and she was away. Remember when Paul, your friend Paul, got into like um, a police was like you know telling us to, to to go move away and and he was like you know telling him like my taxes pay your salary you, you know and it was like that didn't go over well like it was, he was listening to too much fucking dead kennedy so that's what he was <laughs> <laughs> very anti-establishment yeah yeah, and yeah. Then mark i i think with we probably just met at shows <sighs> Yeah, I'm sure it was uh, one of the shows down at the elect electric banana. It may have been like a nuclear assault or something because, like that down at Johnny Bananas. I don't even know. Because Don and I grew, grew up, you know, just 10 minutes away from each other. Mm -hmm. But Mark was about, you know, 45 minutes an hour yeah. away. And Charleroi, that area had their own death metal thing going on. For, for, you know, for, yeah. Pittsburgh had ours. So it was weird. Like, because we all connected, you know, but I had to be at the banana and stuff. And then yeah, I'm sure it was either at the city, city limits or the banana or uh, whatever was back the, uh, at the time available. Uh, yeah. As far as show wise. Yeah. 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 yeah it's I, hard. I, I can't get our first, our first <laughs> meeting moment. Yeah. yeah. Is, Henry, can you? <laughs> <laughs> we we all agree that was the point at which we all met though that's yeah I, yeah that yeah. would have been what circa circa uh, 88 88 yeah 1988 88. yeah for sure and i think if i remember correctly that first time we came out too did we meet with you mark and go to like the mall to try to meet some other guys in rochervor it's john it's very possible there was it's like some possible. mall you this said like uh, what was it? Chris Free would definitely be at like the whatever mall or something. So I think we went there to try to look for. Or I can't remember yeah. exactly, you know. Yeah, it was either him or uh, or Weber. We it was probably down at Century Three Mall or something. That yeah, sounds was, right. Yeah, uh, we're just a bunch of fucking goons uh, back then. You know, we we all we all hung out down at a little. Uh, it, I think this restaurant's only so not like Sharon's going to know and Don's going to know. And I don't know if anybody yeah, else is going to know. You're, you know, Eaton Park, you know, yeah. oh, that yeah, was like totally the, <laughs> that was like right. You know, I could like hit a golf ball to that, to that <laughs> restaurant from where I lived. And that was always like where we kind of hung out. That was like, like death metal, like, uh, uh dumpster death head centrals we met in the back parking lot by the dumpster we just sit there listen to each other's cassettes and just bullshit and have a beer or so but it would have been like right there in like that monongahela uh, area for sure parking you know, lots like and malls that was you know that's it, like shocking and woods and woods yeah. we had the woods, and woods. The woods. Yeah. yeah we'd hang out yeah, woods. like we'd right. random woods we'd find like that's our spot <laughs> Don, do you remember yeah when, actually uh, i me. met henry in the mall too so yeah it's Don like I'm sure. I, Go ahead, Sharon. Sure. Don and I, but we had the, we were with that with Tracy, who's now deceased. But we were, uh, remember, we went to Carnegie, that Carnegie Park, uh, to we we got someone to buy us a four dollar case of beer, and the cops shone the light on us. And then you know, <laughs> remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> a lot of a lot of drinking beer in parks. I, yeah, I can say that. And in, in the woods. Yeah, we, we had no other way, um, other places to go. That was, we, yeah. we had to find like a secluded, you know, isolated place away from the masses, you know? No, we used to, used to go to what to that, wasn't that cemetery or what was that park by in Yonkers you guys used oh, to go to? Untermeyer Park. The Untermeyer, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, once in a while. Usually it was uh, off of Central Avenue, like uh, in Yonkers, we'd go, there'd be like yeah. woods back there and we'd hang out. They'd get like, yeah. ke like a keg of beer and, yeah. and they'd be cranking the radio and the boom yeah. box you know and yep. 
we just hang out all night listening to Slayer and whatever yeah. else. And we have Isn't that the park for the serial killer or something? Untermeyer the Park. Is yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the satanic cult activity happened during the seventies and then like later during the eighties. And yeah, that was. Uh, Cause when Unleashed was over, that's where we went, right? Um, yeah, yes. it's, it's a really yep. cool park. I mean, uh, and they've done a lot of, uh, you know, renovations on it since the eighties and nineties. So now it's really nice. I mean, it's just, oh, it's, you it's wouldn't suffered, recognize it now. It's really yeah, nice. Yeah. It suffered from neglect seriously back then, but now it's really nice. And we've gone there recently. We had a friend over from overseas came over and we took him there and uh, we were surprised. We're like, wow, they really made yeah. this a nice place. You know, it's a really cool park. Cause it starts like where we are on North Broadway and it goes all the way down to the river. The property line went all the way down close to the river. So it was a really, you know, big piece of property that was kind of like, on this incline and it was just nice the way they did it they created some like greek uh, grecian gardens there and it's like all enclosed yeah. in a wall there's a huge wall and it's like really well done and they had this waterfall and we took our our photos for the uh, first album that was at a, a point called the eagle's nest and we probably took you guys there and took pictures there with you sharon and i'm yeah. sure john and yeah, Vince probably both there yeah so it's just yeah. a really nice park. So yeah, that's you know we have it history was, there. <laughs> it looked it like back then it looked metal. Now it like it's too nice to take pictures there. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, they got the flowers and the waterfall, and they, I mean they did an awesome <laughs> job. But I mean you look at it now, you're like, wow, I didn't even recognize this place anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, Bob, I was just thinking how different the world looks now from like when I met Sharon. I remember going to Toronto, and it was like sleazy and crazy and dirty, and there were people just wailing in the streets, and it was. Milk and hash. Remember, that was the first time I ever heard of hash. You're like, hey, like corned beef hash? Like, <laughs> and uh, like the whole, like everything just looks so different now. My first, you know, sight of Pittsburgh, I was like industrial blight, smokestacks. Yeah, like, it looked rough. Just soot and grimy. It looks so fucking cool. We all got black lung, Myanmar. <laughs> <laughs> well, New York, New York was the same. That's why, that's yeah. why our skin yeah. looks so yeah. healthy because yeah. of all that. Like, I kind of miss it. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I'm an outdoorsman. I'm like, yeah, everything's cleaner. It's nice. You can, I can go fishing. It's the fish aren't all corroded and mutated. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. But, Chernobyl fish. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not like that world that we met in. I went yeah. back. Check this out. This is crazy, Sharon. When I was in Pittsburgh at Pitt, I had a friend who got married in Toronto and they were a Jewish family. So they had a traditional Jewish wedding. And I drove up there with some friends and my ex. And I'm, I walk up to this place and I'm like, man, this fucking looks familiar. And I go inside and they're having like the full blown Jewish ceremony and the singing. And then all of a sudden there's a funk band on stage and all the old Jewish guys are dancing. I'm like, this is where I met Sharon. Oh my God. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> Full circle again. It yeah. had been straight, cleaned up. A lot of circles. Yeah. It's been so cleaned I, up. I, didn't I think we're at a triangle now. Yeah. <laughs> it caught a lodge. No. That's right. Totally. It was, uh, it was weird. It was, it, the world was just so different. When we went, Sharon, maybe you want to tell her, but we went to dinner at the Banana a couple of years ago. Yeah. 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 Oh, you did? Um, was it good? It's excellent. It, what, it, it's not oh the Banana God. no more, though, right? Something else. No, it's uh, Zaro's. Like, is that how you say the last name? Judy Zaro's, and Zaro's. Yeah. Zara, Zara's. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the yeah, owners of the Electric Banana, like they would, when bands would come in, like Judy was an amazing you know, Italian cook and she would always cook like raviolis or rigatoni or something. I remember like, you know, it was always like a thing. And then whenever they decided to, uh, you know, get out of the, the club business, they um, turned the electric banana venue into a fancy, I mean, it's like fancy, expensive uh, Italian food, but they didn't get rid of the walls. They built the uh, restaurant over top of the venue. So the son was there and like showing us where he took us like to this like closet and it was still the black walls with the stickers and stuff like that. And he said that everything underneath like, this drywall so is, is, is the is original. Is it still owned club. by the bananas? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Oh, okay. Yeah, the yeah. son runs the place. Yeah, oh. I order. I order food from them. The bananas. Like, <laughs> They're crazy. Those fuckers there. Every the time bananas. you went there, it was like a fucking some kind of drama going on. Like Donnie a brawl or taking out guns or something at the show. Sharon, or just, there's a picture of Sharon and Don and I sitting on the window outside the banana. And yeah. Sharon and I went outside and we recreated the picture. Yeah. Um, and there was like a nice plant where Don should be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was a plant. So you're represented there as a plant. <laughs> but, but Johnny did. He did. Could be worse. Quite yeah. a bit. He, oh, we never, What's that? He pulled a gun on um, Ex Mortis. Ex Mortis, yeah. Oh, I remember that show. Uh, yeah, that was, that, show. that was, I think that guy, Ted, I think was his name. He Ted came Hart. Out. Yeah, and he was, yeah. he was doing just like a real um introduction like ah and he's called uh the banana the shithole and oh, johnny yeah. was like he goes, is, get the fuck out and he's yeah, like, he the shithole. <clears throat> yeah, he, yeah whoever that was he was like this place sucks and this and that and like 30 seconds later john's like get the fuck out of here get That's... the fuck out. So i told brian because he was like we finally talked we're like oh like you know no 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 he's, they drove all this way and they're like they can play one song and so I told Brian, I said, just don't stop. Just, just <laughs> keep playing. Just don't stop. Minutes, um, and that's what they did. I like, did, you know. He's like, this one's I've always seen. They played like the 25 minute song. Just, I don't know, I can't remember how long. But yeah, like that was like people now, I, I just wonder, because you know how the social culture is now. I just wonder how they would have, you know, been back then like yeah sure you know, do you remember who yeah. else was on that show with ex mortis when all that shit went down do you remember who uh, else was on that was deceased on that show i don't think so deceased played oh. a lot up here yeah oh I, i'll never forget when uh they played up here up in like the balvarna area and those guys went and stayed in a little a little shit bag hotel up the road here and oh. we went and we went and was gonna uh, <laughs> We went. Then we decided all to go to like uh, like shop and save or Giant Eagle or Foodland. Those guys wanted some groceries. I remember like king of those guys. Like they're walking down the fucking aisle. And they're like uh, right there, like where the like the the packaged up bologna and this and the cheese sticks were. They're just like walking down the aisle and opening up the fucking cheese sticks and eating them and throwing the papers in the aisle. And boom, then we get back to the hotel and man, it was it was like chaos. I think they wound up still in a fucking Miss Pac Man machine or something. That was yeah. I was waiting for you to get yeah, to that. It was like one of those like. Rob yeah, and Bob, like you like, were there. Well, no, no, I was just going to say, you I, were there. I remember our that first, now. Our first time oh. playing in, in uh, that area was, I think, in Belverna. Yeah. Was that the Jam and yeah. Skate? Jam and Skate. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I think that, that or yeah. the Odyssey or the Pit, one or the other. It was, it was down got, below. I know we got pictures some, of the Jam and Skate. So. Yeah, and that oh, was There's some nice. video. That was with the Yeah, there's some video of you guys playing Chapel of Ghouls. Oh, yeah. I think that Yep. Yeah, you guys were playing Chapel of Ghouls, and I think we were all like right there in the in the front watching that show go down. Like, this was downstairs in the bottom. I think it was called the Pit. Oh, I remember that show. Yeah, yeah. we played Bell Vernon, which was like the Jam and Skate. That was like yep. the bigger, bigger place. place. Yeah, and then I remember that was the up place. Above. Yeah, and I remember the place you're talking about was downstairs. Yeah. Totally. Did right Robin play it, yeah, that show too at Jam and Skate? Yes. No. Yes. There's yeah. there's video of that well, on mine. Yeah, on on well, YouTube. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and say this. Remember, Ross and Bob drove with John to the show, the first Revenant show in Pittsburgh. Yes. When you guys played that jam and skate, you picked me up at my house in Jersey, and I came out in the van with Immolation and that guy Dave that you guys used to hang out with. Dave Lorena. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah well, I just saw, uh, well, I talked to him, <laughs> uh, but I see him periodically, yeah. And John <laughs> had I just guess. left Revenant, so... Revenant was gonna play and we didn't play because we oh, didn't sorry. have a band. Oh, oh God, damn you, John! Sorry, damn it, John. What'd you do? <laughs> and I was like, I got to the show with you guys, and I was like, Oh, John's here too. I didn't know he was going. I was like, Hey, man! And it was like kind of awkward. He's like, Hey, man. <laughs> like, yay! <laughs> yes, <laughs> party. We're, we're good like that. Like the yeah. first tour we did with, with Gorophobia, we took Alex with us as as a roadie after yeah. he, it just kicked him out. So I know. Uh, we're the kings well, of the awkward moment. Yeah, that didn't go so well either. <laughs> well, I, 
I fucking because I was kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna go over here. I ended up with deceased, and I was there when King stole that Pac Man. I saw. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, it was like the Pac Man ice thing, right? It was the tabletop. No, it was, yeah, it was the, the video. It wasn't, it wasn't a machine, wasn't it? Wasn't it like no, a garbage was can a, or something? It was or? a sit no. down. It was like a it was a sit a down cooler. head. It was head to head. Miss oh, Pac Man. Wow, I, the tabletop. Yeah. You sat down <laughs> and yeah, you were facing down. your opponent, and it was a Miss Pac Man machine. Oh yeah, and then like I remember because I was in the the hotel room. I think it was Ross and Bob. Like you guys were there, or Henry. Like we were all in a room and then someone came in the door. They're like, King's still in the Miss Pac-Man machine. And we're like, what? You know, they, we're they like, stole the microwave too. Yeah, like off the window. Like they were throwing off it the out window. the window. I don't so know how like, they got away with all that. All yeah, I think, King's still all the time. And, but we, we just, all like left. We just looked out, saw that. We were like, all right, we're out of here. Yeah, <laughs> I I just, yeah. We don't want to have any part of that. I, I just remember seeing a, like a pickup truck and the machine in the back of it. And it's like going down. And they're like, beep, beep, you know, like. <laughs> and we're yeah, that, like, <laughs> and that hotel is only a, yeah, that hotel is only a that lady. What's that? You ran over that. No, actually, I think that was when X Mortis played it. The, the, no, it was a different hotel that's literally right on the other side of the highway. I remember those guys were backing up their vehicle, and there was somebody in the parking lot that shouldn't have been there. Some lady that, like, she either owned the place or it was the daughter of or something, and somebody got backed into. And man, it was a fucking shit show from there. Somebody got backed yeah. over in the parking lot. Yeah. I thought it was but, you. No, 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 it wasn't me. Hey, Don, I'm, I'm a safe driver. Allegedly. <laughs> Don, were you there? At the um, Odyssey, I think you were there. The Odyssey, yeah, I was there, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I remember I came out with immolation, but I, I ended up going back to Jersey with Ripping Corpse in their van. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember uh, Lever. Yeah. <laughs> And I missed their set, and I was always pissed. I was like, "Fuck!" I always wanted to see that set, and it was like their it was their first out of state show. And I remember I was just excited, and we're all these bands are playing, and I barely. Well, it is something with with all of us meeting. Then we started like booking shows back yeah. and forth. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, because then uh, Primeval was coming to Bell Vernon. I mean, it was. Yeah. Oh yeah, once the floodgates were open, that was it. We were trying to set up shows for each other in all different parts because being in another state to play a show was like back then was like wow, you know, a super big deal. State. Yeah, we were, tour. It was awesome, exactly. <laughs> so you know that was kind of cool because we all had the contacts with each other to just try and create shows for each other in different places. Yeah, it's like that that area was not ready for that music at all. It, it was not ready. Like, yeah, I don't think a lot of areas were ready. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, every, I'm sure everybody out there. <laughs> Even in New York, I'm sure everybody, everybody yeah. they weren't ready I'm sure everybody who was yeah. who was available in a band back in that you know that late eighties uh, time frame or early nineties had their own little little community. Sure. And well, that's they, so weird. We were in. It, it was all like like we weren't normal at the time. Like when we were yeah, well, like, every little like, community. Yes, like more. we were these fucking devil fucking people here well, with the long there, hair there was, little, there was clusters and playing, of us all around the globe i mean all yeah, around yeah, the and it was it like, wasn't just like heavy metal it was extreme metal like it was next like, level you yeah, know, we it's, it's, outcast and it was everywhere outcasts. every little community in, over the planet had those little areas but oh, totally. i can tell i know green tree wasn't let it ready for it <laughs> bell vernon wasn't yeah. fucking ready for it you know, even, nobody was ready even for Even around it, here, uh, I remember when we would play, you know, the early shows at Streets uh, yeah. in, in New Rochelle, not too far from Yonkers, uh, you know, they'd have metal nights. It was kind of cool. They'd have like a hardcore night, a metal night, and like a, a glam night or something. So, but every weekend they had, you know, shows every weekend. Mm -hmm. And we would play, obviously, originals, but we didn't have enough. So we'd play cover songs and we'd be like, all right, this is a, a cover song from Sepultura, you know, Morbid Visions. And people would look at us like, what? Who? You know, like what? What are you doing? What the hell are you guys doing? Or, or we do like an autopsy cover. They're like, what? You know, but we didn't care. We played it, and then you know, a few months later, people started catching on. So you know, even in New York, you know, it took a while for yeah. people to catch on. Oh, I yeah. remember years. I remember years ago, uh, right before uh, we, uh, before Rochevor put our demo. It was either right or right before we put our demo out, which would have been, I think, 
uh, 1990, we heard, there was a club down in uh, Whitehall. And Sharon, I'm sure you probably remember that. I can't remember what it was called. It's called Someplace Else or Someplace Special, oh, something like that. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't Whitehall. That was uh, right off of 51, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, that was, oh, yeah, that was oh, Whitehall. I'm thinking, yes. oh, that's Whitehall? Yeah, it's right there, it's right there by, the, by the Eaton. Eaton Park. Yeah, right over the hill. Right over the 51, yeah. 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 yeah, and they were notorious for having, you know, like Blam. glam bands and just like, just, you know, yeah, whatever you want to, you know, that type of music. So we wound up getting a show booked there and we went there and after the first song, oh, they fucking hated us, man, because we were just, you know, really just down in the gutter. We're tuned down to like a fucking B. I just got the, you know, me and Chris were going the, the dual gargled vocals and then after like the second song i'm like you guys want to hear it one more and everybody was like like 200 people like no (laughs) (laughs) boom so we like blistered into like five more songs oh they fucking hated us man because it was a total glam club and they fucking just mark off they hated us well i i could totally relate to that show i remember that show i totally we just did it for a joke you know Henry and I used to have to deal with that stuff too back in the early days. We played Studio One, was open Studio One, like American Studio Angel One, Air, man. or something yeah. like that. I mean, um, a lot of shows back in the day. Yeah, right? dude, we saw you guys there <laughs> a lot, man. Yeah, we, back when we were doing the, the, I mean, was it we were playing Revenant shows? Was it was it at Studio One? I, I remember. No, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was a thing can. Was Studio One around when we were doing Revenant shows? I don't yeah, think so. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we we, we would did. Watch we played those a couple. Right? Little, well, yeah, we did a couple. I a remember. little booth up on the top. Yeah, yeah on the yes. stage, yes. like watch you guys. <laughs> yes, that's right. There's a picture I, of you guys watching us play, and you're up in the booth. Yeah, <laughs> yes, totally. Yes, that's totally. right. That's right. Yeah, Great. yeah. So that was still pretty pretty early on. But yeah, we used to play with some. So we used to have the same problem when I was doing the Incan stuff too. Like early early shows, they'd put us on with like some of the popular glam bands and then yeah. you know Incan would be opening up for it but we were just happy to get a show and I was same thing with Revenant though but I mean Revenant was even worse because it was like even earlier so people were just looking at us like you know you'd be like one guy I'd be like well that was kind of cool you know yeah. but like yeah. he's like I, I heard Slayer <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it was like know, the more it was like the more bands that that kind of heard like the uh the heavy the heavy guitars and the growly vocals, there was always like a couple of people there that were like, oh, wow, that sounds fucking haunting, man. And yeah. it just built up steam and yeah. it built up steam and it just kept yeah. going and going and going. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that was, the, I'm sure it was like yeah. that, you know, back in, you know, the the early 80s and the mid 80s when it came with, you know, the heavy metal and the thrash, it just kept building and just getting steam to the point where, you well, know. If you, if you look at our progression, I mean, like, you know, like I started looking at dates of, of, of certain songs, like like Dream On like came out in like 1972. So like when we're like, we were kind of being groomed into like this by like, you know, listen to Aerosmith and you know, Led Zeppelin and all that. And then by the time we're all like about 10 years old, you know, when there's like, you know, Diary of a Madman, you know, coming out and that's all like Mr. Crowley and it's, that's like sounding evil. It was kind of like sucking us in, you know. And oh, then once sure. once Metallica came, like, yeah, you, like you know? always like a step. There's always like a step more to yeah. go, you know. Like a natural progression, which we talked yeah, about. Yeah, everybody did John. Yeah, yeah. But, like but it was like as young as we were. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were we were we were really young. Like when you think about it, like now it's yeah, like we were, back to '88. We were like. 18 going on 19 you know so yeah. we were, you know so we were all you know we were still teenagers you know and yeah i mean we didn't know what the hell we were doing and we were we found we found a niche that nobody else like you know was like people were like what the hell are you guys doing you know we, yeah. we talked about this in in the, in the last interview like totally. our rehearsal place where we practiced was a monthly place and you know all the bands there would just kind of look at us and kind of laugh behind our backs because they were like you know what the hell are these kids doing <laughs> you know so, <laughs> so yeah we were all like outliers but we all kind of you know, you you kind of found those people that were, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, into the same stuff, you know, and and like minded. We bond our pack, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. and that's why we, when we all found each other, we all became quick friends because, uh, you know, it was was very hard to find people into like the heavier stuff. So, 
so it did it makes sense you know we all kind of stayed in touch and we kind of had our little unit back then and that's where things kind of grew from there you know so it was awesome and don you were heavy into uh like you knew a lot of people um through tape trading um you know like with like goat lord because i know that's how like you turned me on the goat lord and um, the fog i remember henry t- turned me on to that he's like dude the fog i remember you telling me <laughs> <laughs> the black stinking fog yeah. there was Come on. You, you gotta you gotta do that hank that's great <laughs> <laughs> but ross one of the first letters uh i i remember getting from you um i believe you had you had just quit college yeah, I did. I think, and I, I, mean, right. I got a letter from you and you, you wrote that in there about, you know, you you left school and uh, basically you said that uh, you, the reason you left school was you just wanted to keep playing death metal or whatever. Yeah. whatever you, and well, I thought, why the fuck am I in college? <laughs> I should just quit now. And well, now you it's know, like, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I was I was in school very young. I was 16 when I went into college. So I was much younger than a lot of the other class people in my class. And I really didn't know what I wanted to do. It's very hard for a 16 year old to kind of like, you know, plan out the life. in college? You know? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> by the time I was, Wonder Boy. I was in my yeah. second year when, yeah. when the like baby Hauser. Hauser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was too young. In retrospect, I was much too young. So I really didn't, you know, find, I, I didn't know where my place was yet. Yeah, you know, but I knew for sure that music was something I was probably the most passionate about, you know, and especially at that time when we were discovering all this new music that was heavier, more aggressive and darker. And I had I was playing bass already for a couple of years at that point. I wasn't that great, but I was involved in music, you know, on some level. And <laughs> Yeah, you know, since I was getting discouraged with my classwork, I I left, you know, I didn't finish my second year, so I never got my associates, and I left, and like, literally, like, a month later, I think I left in, like, December, and, like, in January, uh, Tom came to my job, uh, our old guitar player, and asked me uh, if I wanted to join Rigor Mortis, because Andrew had left, and I, I knew all the guys, I'd been to their rehearsals, I'd seen them play live a bunch of times, so I was, you know, I was pretty tight with those guys, and I, I thought it was like, you know, just a great opportunity. I was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. You know, I did something I always wanted to do, you know, and the this is the music I want to play, you know, because when I heard the Rigor Mortis yeah, demo, that was I was a great like, one. holy shit, this is like next well, level. That's the problem. It's like once you get started, you're just like, you don't want to do anything else. And then it's just like, yeah. you know, why go to school? I, I don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. we even left our job, but we were working in the same place for a little while because we weren't going to school because we were just trying to do the band. And then. Uh, you know, we had a chance to go to Europe just to go meet up, you know, and take a trip with some of the, the people like uh, Entombed and the Napalm Death guys. And this was like in 88 or 89. And it was like, yeah. all right, well, I could stay here and work or we can go check out Europe. So, you know, we just went and took a trip to Europe, you know. Yeah, so, yeah that's We're a good so decision. focused on the music and that's what drove us, you know, just just we were into it. And that was the goal, you know, that, that's... And, and then you played your first show with Revenant and there were eight people there. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? It was, yeah, it was cheers, awesome right? though, man. I was nervous as hell. I'd only been singing for like two weeks because Tom yeah. was like going to be the singer <laughs> yeah. and he's just like, hey, dude, I'm going to concentrate more on guitar and so you're going to be the singer. And I'm like, oh, freaking <laughs> great. <laughs> he, like just, he just sang the Sepultura cover, right? <laughs> no, I yeah, he did sing the one cover, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that was like Ross was just like, alrighty, that, that, you know, I got to do it now. So yeah, yeah that was awesome. Who well, else? He got broken in quick. <laughs> who else did? Who else played that show? I forget. Was it Henry Rip remembers? Corpse. Ripping Derange. Corpse was it? Well, Derange, Derange, Ripping Corpse, yeah. Derange. And uh, and you and you guys, we talked yeah, about it on our interview. Remember yeah, we talked about Deranged? Yeah. yeah. Remember Chris from Autopsy was there. Was he? Was it at that show? I don't that know. See, like we talked about that, but I don't know if he was at that particular show. See, I don't we also remember had that Blood Feast there. show that oh, got that all fucked it. up there. That was yeah. the one. Yeah, because yeah. we would have remembered that one. A different yeah. time of year. Yeah, Yeah, because Blondies, I think that's the first time we met the, the Ripping Corpse guys too, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that was that's the it. first time we met Revenant. That was our yeah. first time yeah. with everybody. First, yeah, it's true. So that was yeah. our first show as a band. Yeah, that show. That was the first time I realized Immolation had a personality. 
It's like, <laughs> for those of you who didn't see the interview with John a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to go back and, and look at yeah, that. Yeah, you have to check the other the other episode out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, uh, that was cool, though. That was, that was great, was man. That was our first show. Um, it was awesome. It was but awesome. Juan, I can't believe you remember that letter. Do you still have it? What's, what's, what's that? that? The letter that Ross sent you, like, I'm dropping out of college to play. Oh, music. oh no, wow. I, that's long gone. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. You know, I got all, I got all you of the mail. throw it out and you sell it. <laughs> so I, I probably have all the old letters or correspondence from back then. I never, I obviously never threw anything out. It's just in bins. So, and I, 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 got, I got all mine. Yeah. So I kind of revisited that stuff, you know, in the last couple of months for, for something unrelated. And I was like, wow, this is cool just to look through so many old fan know, mail. And just to see Me all too. The- I, I, I had to do something similar and I, I took some samples and I was like, like, wow. Like there was a one guy from Possessed who I think uh, he was like a maybe a later member or whatever was it Bob Yost? Bob Yost, yeah, yeah, yeah Bob yeah, Yost. Hank, Hank knows yeah. Bob Yost. Like, like, like I had a letter. Rest from in him. peace. Yeah, 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 I know that I really died. Um, but I, I was so weird with. I still am as far as like keeping in contact with people because that writing letters. Oh my god, people just don't know how much time consuming that was. Sure, and that was the uh, first World Wide Web right there for us. Oh yeah. my god, <laughs> and it was I, the I, internet. Well, what? once everything started going and, and, you know, everyone's like great in each other, like it would be like, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get all these done, uh, you know, and this, this stack is interviews and this stack is orders. And then you'd get them done and you go, Whew, okay, I got them done. Next, next thing you know, oh, they're right back. They, 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 wrote, they wrote like right back and they're yeah. back in the pile. And I'm like, oh my God. I, I, so, I, I can relate to that. Cause I remember you would like, get a letter from someone you you know you were corresponding with and you'd write them a long letter tell them what's going on and you'd send it out and you'd get a letter back immediately like oh yeah. my god i gotta write again now <laughs> <laughs> hey. oh my god it was too quick guy it takes some time how do you think i became an english professor <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i remember years ago when uh, all when... that damn mail <laughs> that's right man but you know the, the kids yeah. today i gotta plug my like, uh how hard we had to work to keep keep up the correspondence to keep in touch it wasn't the uh you know instant gratification society that yeah. we have today with yeah, the shoot off a quick email or anything yeah you know yeah. we had to put the time in and it was it was gratifying you know because you know it was it was more personable i think well, it was nice every day to go, come home for you know, for me for coming from school or work or something sure. and have like a freaking you know nice little pile of mail waiting in your mailbox or something right. or like Christmas. mom would put like on the on yeah, yeah this be awesome and it was cool because you get these demos you know from who knows where and you take the time and listen to it and actually like give each demo like a proper listen you know and you know time to digest it sure yeah it wasn't like now where everything's so you know so easy to just like yeah. rapid fire rapid yeah, fire. yeah too, much, like, too much too much yeah but i, I do it before we go on i gotta ask henry about the desecration you saw your old desecration shirts I don't think so. Those are, you used to wear those all the time. That was classic. Was it the Cowboys and Bondage or something? Yeah, that like was that? Like, what? Yeah, that was that was that was this classic <laughs> stuff. I just remember you playing that for me all the time. I've saved some things, and some things I just don't know what happened to them. I've moved so many times over the years. Yeah, uh, but listening to you guys say that, like, and I've talked to Ross about this a, a year ago because. I've been arranging to have my dad's papers archived in a library. Oh, cool. Back in Jersey, because he left a lot of publications and letters and materials from when, you know, he had a long career as a journalist. And yeah. there's got to be a music library or archive for crazy shit <laughs> that would love to have the immolation correspondence and the demos and all this material from the 80s i know i still have a lot of fanzines from then sure i I still have a lot of demos but not all of them i have some correspondence um but not a lot but all that stuff to you know looking at it down the road when we're all gone that's going to be valuable to people who write and research about music history and of course. You want to take out the dumb shit before you put it in there, right? Like, you know, the well, embarrassment. We, we, we There'll be nothing to put in, but we'll, nah. we, we, we should have left a, a, a rule book or a manual. For, you know, we didn't know it was going to keep going know. and expanding and expanding. It's, well, that's, it's, part, uh, that's part of the reason why I'm actually doing the, the show and trying to do shows with 
older school bands to try to get some of these stories out from the old days, just, sure. you know, cause people, you know, people forget, or, you know, when you have these kind of conversations, you get to bring, you know, people, Oh crap. I remember. Cause I know I had a wonderful interview with Henry uh, a couple months that he was talking about earlier. And it just brought That's back so many memories great. that I totally, totally didn't even remember. And after him kind of sparking it, it was like, Oh crap, I'm remembering this stuff. And it's great for the archival pur purposes, you know? So I'm hoping that somebody can actually do something with, you know, what I'm trying to do is just get, information out there somebody who's you know either has the time or the resources to organize a you know a, a proper database you know maybe dig yeah because digitize it or something get, do you guys even even the people that will like kind of compare tape trading to like the illegal downloads and all that stuff like that that argument, the they, they just don't get it like no. they don't understand that like a record store would get like you know like one copy of status delusions you know it wasn't like yeah. these were like mass produced so it's like you know like if i got was the one that got to the before terry did you know i was the one that was like ah, you know or it's like you know vice versa she would get like you know an album and i'd be like ah, you know so she would find it and then what we would do is we'd go back to each other's house and then we would record it onto cassette and that was mm -hmm. That was the only thing that we could do. Otherwise, you just don't listen to it at all. It's not like there was a mail order. There was no internet. Yeah. There was no contact. I mean, you just had to wait until you stumbled upon the actual we item. We would always, like, it, when you had a tape like that, if you weren't able to get the actual vinyl, eventually, once you were, you would get it. So Yeah, yeah. you get it. To, because we would travel we, around. We would always buy it anyway, you know, yeah. eventually. But we, we, we would travel around to different cities, like Buffalo yeah. record stores, oh. you know, Cleveland record stores. So it's not, we weren't, like, just, like, stuck, you know, like, yeah. we were, like, if there I mean, was a show going on, we had to hit everything up. Yeah, yeah Henry and I... Yeah, Henry and I used to take a trip to Slip Disc or yeah. go to That's some of the great. places out in New Jersey, just to so whatever record stores were around. I mean, Henry knew a bunch of that I didn't even know about when I met him. And we, we'd go there and just look at everything that came in new and just, you know, pick pick something out from like, you know, maybe five different record stores or something in, in, a, in a week or so. It was almost like a weekly thing that we would do back I then. I remember the first time I we went to Slip Disc, that place blew me away because there was oh so God, much stuff. Totally. And yeah. then all of us, Ross, Tom, whatever, we, we'd all go in there, and if we found a record... Oh, oh fail. <laughs> fail. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> he said it. Uh, yeah. Of course, right when, he, right when he starts talking, uh, right? Bob's like this, he's like... <laughs> Wait, hey, everybody, do a freeze, everybody do a freeze frame, so Ready? when he comes back, Ready? he'll think, right? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, that is the best. Yeah, that's a good shot. Oh man, that's, <laughs> that's gonna be something. Someone get a Photoshop, like something that he's seeing, you know, or. Before we get before we get too far off base, I just wanted to touch on something that Henry brought up earlier about the arch archiving. Uh, uh, the old uh, letters and there is um, a site that um, Jason uh, Netherton from Misery Index put together called uh, sendbackmystamps.org and, he, <gasps> and he's archiving all Whoa. the old fanzines so you could go in there and you could just find Ross, we're get, Ross hold on we're getting into illegal federal uh, territory here right now if you go any further with this <laughs> send back my stamps yeah. <laughs> i was just gonna bring that up a little bit ago with you know hold on i hope nobody brings that up because we're getting into a you know like let the elmer's glue in the water and yeah. whatnot and, and he just named that like that was the name <laughs> of the site because we all remember those days so it's just a yeah. great oh. name but he's archiving oh. all the old fancy <laughs> so you could go on this site now and you could just find any fanzine that he has up there, of course, and you could click on it and you can go page by page to the fanzine and read the fanzine on the site. Oh, that's cool. that's so incredible. It's, it's that's epic, cool. dude. It's like, he's got a, a, a ton of them up there now. He's been doing it for a couple of years and I was only made aware of it a couple of years ago. And I think I told you, Henry, as well about that. It's, yeah. it's really cool the way he did that. So yeah. So and that's, that's the kind of thing, like he's done that preliminary work and you want to have that after he's done with it, like keep building and have that sort yep. of, like you know just that 
so that it gets preserved for people later who hear this music and think, where the fuck did this come from? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, otherwise, uh, it's like the end of Blade Runner, you know? It all gets lost, like tears in the rain. Yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're right. You're right. I mean, you know, people, you know, that would give people good insight mm. to what was going on in our heads <laughs> at that time. You remember, the, you remember the days when you were mailing something uh, overseas and you, you had your choices? Mail it air mail or surface mail? You remember yeah. that? Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 what happened to the boat? Like, they no longer have a boat. Yeah. You know? It's all, it's all yeah. air mail. I don't think anything goes by boat now because it was either like, oh, okay, this guy was a good tape trader. I'm going to air mail his shit. Yeah. This, this guy in jackass yeah. flats, bum fuck, yeah. wherever the fuck he was from, <laughs> and sent me a, the, the cheapest belt. fucking cassettes you can yeah. get with yeah. the most horrible stuff recordings on it he's getting surface mail he'll get yeah, it three yeah. months later <laughs> fuck him yeah. send two stamped irc's and uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. My, international my response post- coupons yeah. oh my god my my uh i never used them i never cashed them in i think i took them to my post office one time and they were like what is this and I'm yeah like, we were just oh, like man. yeah whatever we had a pile of them you know i, I still <sighs> have them they're like all paper clipped together and like <laughs> <laughs> they would still make those IRCs. Oh my God. Wow. Did they? That was like Did a they? Western Union on paper. <laughs> yeah, <it> was, <laughs> no, sorry, you get the little white piece of paper with a little stamp on it. it yeah. Was thin, like yes. tissue paper. It's like, it was supposed to be worth money, and I never used it. Yeah. Never... They're, they're government issued, though, aren't they? So I think they probably it's have all to. Fe- still, it's all federal stuff. It still yeah. has to be like, you could still go yeah, to the I post like office and be like, well, I demand maybe. my. Damn, I gotta go through sense. my own letters. Plus interest. <laughs> yeah. I want my interest. My IRCs plus interest. <laughs> yeah, get out. Get, yeah. <laughs> we can all retire just from those. Where IRCs. do you cash those in at? If you went down to the post office, say, "Here's my stack of IRCs from 1889." Like, <laughs> 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 oh, we heard about these. I remember my. Yeah. Uncle used to work here years ago, and he told me about it. Yeah, it'll probably be like there's a, you know a five hundred dollar processing fee, you know, but we'll we'll take care yeah. of it. Bob and I, <laughs> Bob and I were infamous at at the the Yonkers Cent, Centuck station oh because we were such dicks because we worked together at Saks Fifth Avenue oh. in the distribution center, like right down the street. So we would take our lunch break after we had our like all night mail marathon. We do all our letters one night together, all four of us, and we'd have like. 50 packages going out the next day all over the world and we'd bring them into work we take our lunch break run down there and then they'll have two windows open and like assholes we'd split up and go one on each window and by the time we got out of there they would i no shit there'd be about like 20 30 people lined out outside just hating us yeah they'd be hating us you sour. fucking pricks <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, we're, we're yeah. Fucked up with that. Remember the uh the calling cards? Like somebody would get uh their prepaid phone card. Mom, yeah, the prepaid phone card, but it was someone's corporate. Oh phone yeah. Card. Oh yeah. yeah. We call yeah. 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 We would, I, yeah, yeah, we would call people <laughs> on that and, and then until like the company like caught on. And then we would wait for another one, and it would like oh. just like wildflower, yeah, like, yeah. or wildfire, yeah. Yeah. and uh, all of us using the same uh, corporate. Yeah, that was the perfect cards. time. That was the perfect time to call your uh, your 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 Swedish tape trader. Totally. <laughs> we like I was saying, we did that. We were out in Jersey, I think, with uh, you guys, uh, John and Veg. We were out there for something, yeah. and it was I think it was around. It might have been like a, a New Year's Eve kind of thing because we were the, like. Is that Wasn't the night it? with the diner malfunction as well? Yeah, that might that have been the, the diner, diner malfunction. Oh, when, yeah. when, when you guys bailed on us, like we didn't know what was going on and you guys just like ditched and didn't pay the check. And, and we looked outside and we see like, all you guys running out from the diner. We were like, oh shit, they left and didn't pay the check. So we left and we ran <laughs> and we didn't know where we were going. We just wound up running and running and we we found our car, but we lost you guys. But anyway, earlier yeah, that, that night, was. We called Chris, remember, from Autopsy, and we were just, like, talking to him on one of those prepaid phone cards. <laughs> That's funny, because the, the, I remember, I, I actually had called Chris Reifert on one of those cards, too. <laughs> totally, you know, it was so funny, man. And he was probably just like, well, what the fuck's wrong with these it's guys? It's like they probably got in touch with him, because everybody was calling his number with that card. Uh, <laughs> where and he we? was probably the one that got investigated. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, he's probably thinking, like, those people are on the East Coast. They'll never call me. 
Exactly. Yeah. I'm calling that's her. What, that's what, uh, you know, like it was neat, like just like calling information. Like we would call information and and find people. And like, it, it's not like, you know, Chris's phone number was like listed or anything, but it was just like, we would, I remember like I called information and I got Joe Franklin's uh, from Goat Lord's number. And I used to call him a lot, you know? And, uh, <laughs> I, I was so fascinated by because they lived in the desert and um, they would have um, concerts in the desert with a no. generator. Yeah, I heard yeah. about that. Yeah, and I was just like, oh my God, like that just seems so archaic and stuff. It was like, just, I don't know. It was so uh, just different, you know? Awesome. Killer. And I remember like getting the, the international phone calls. Uh, like, that. I remember Roger from Macrodex called me and uh chelsea used to call me and it, it it was always like in the middle of the night and under other circumstances if you get a phone call in the middle of the night it's like somebody died like a relative yeah. or something it's like bad news you know but like for others like no 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 it's for me you know go back to bed <laughs> and I'm like, like, it's either a death like, notice or a swedish death metal or it's one yeah. Of them. yeah yeah i used to get <laughs> swedish death metalers calling me in the middle of the night or something too <laughs> This dude Matthias, what was it from? Uh, Cer- I can't crem- not crematorium, but uh, Cer- Cer- I can't remember. One of those bands over there used to call me all the time, and I'm just like, how the hell can you afford to call me all the time? You know, but yeah, he basically was doing the same scam, you know, except in Sweden, calling me on Ross, those. Ross, remember who used to call us all the time? Who? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Who? That that Satanist. Oh, wait a second. From New York? Yeah. From upstate New York? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I do remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he would call you and then he would call me and we were like uh, on the phone with each other. But it was, yeah, that, that was a, an odd one. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, like a satanic fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, we had a few interesting fans who would uh, reach out to us. We had the one guy who sent us... Uh, he would write to us in his own blood. He'd have yeah, uh, yeah. And then he he one time sent us back all our correspondence over the last over the course of time we had written to him. So let's say a, a two years we were writing to this guy, you know, back and forth. At one point, he sent us all our correspondence back to us. He was like, "Here, I wanted to give you guys something." It was all the letters we wrote to him, you know? And he wrote us this letter in blood, and we were just like, "Already then." <laughs> yeah, I remember like a couple times, like you open up a letter and you're just like, you know, do 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 do. You're not expecting anything, and then you you, you pull it out, and it's like, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It's just like splattered with someone's blood, and you're just yeah. like kind of like, Ew. You're like hazmat, hazmat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And for the most part, everybody was cool, though. Those instances were rare. We had a couple of interesting people, but for yeah. the most part, everybody was they like, were us. Cool. yeah, they were they weren't assholes or anything. They no. were just, uh, no, these guys um, were cool. The guys we're talking about were fine, but just they yeah. were a little, a little odd. Yeah. <laughs> did, yeah. Um, did any guys get the uh, was it Lithuanian alcohol or something in the mail? trades you know what? i thought vodka one yeah time. i was a vodka yeah i used to get vodka in the mail to trade for like our yeah. demos and stuff when i was doing in camp and i remember the top was like it, it wasn't like a cap it was like it was almost like it was like yeah. waxed on like <laughs> like uh yeah it was like some like kind of like yeah it was like some kind of like uh old soviet style uh <laughs> vodka they'd send us in the mail in trade for demos it's crazy yeah. <laughs> I'll tell and you. then, like, stuff from that part of the world would have, like, uh, if you got a demo, it would be wrapped in just plain brown paper with, like, string around it, remember? Yes. And that was yeah. the packaging. It wasn't, like, in a mailer or anything, you know? So it, that's how you get it from back then. And then the money, we would put it in carbon paper. Why Why was it the carbon paper? Because it couldn't get paid. Couldn't see, the, yeah. couldn't see the denomination on an yeah. x-ray. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they do that in tinfoil, didn't they, too? I got a couple things with money wrapped yeah. in tinfoil and all kinds of, you know, crazy stuff back then. Yeah. We, were, we were crafty back then as youngsters. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the one thing that, that I can, uh, that I'm really upset, not upset, but it really gets under my skin now is the uh, the, the cassette making the, the comeback. Because I, I think people think that cassettes were like something that we really wanted. Like that was like the poor man's thing you know like vinyl was the was what we were wanting you know what i mean 
and yeah, but... cassettes were just kind of like, man, I, you know, this is all we had. You would listen to the, well, the car and all that. At the time. Well, the cool thing about cassettes is like you could buy like 10 records and then you could, you know, record them all or record parts of them and put different now songs on it, share them with your friends. So cassettes were great. That's like what that. I recommend people to do because I won't do the, the professional cassettes, you know what I mean? But it's like, yeah. that's like what I recommend. Like if you want to hear us on a cassette, do it the way we used to do it. Buy the album or MP3 and record it to a cassette and they're your fucking old school. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. I'm not, I'm not into the corporate. But thing you know uh, everything seems to come around though it's like it kind of gets trendy again or something you know the cassette well, cassettes are big time now yeah oh, I know. No, it's, crazy. it's like it's, it's it's ridiculous how popular they are i mean I, really i hated them back then, i don't really know who has a cassette player anymore besides maybe some of us old school guys but most of the kids i mean i doubt they even <laughs> have a player they probably don't even know what it is you know <laughs> um, well we made those pencils the retro oh uh, yeah those were the best yeah. What's that? The, the retro tape winder or whatever that is. Yeah, oh, the yeah. pencil. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the pencil. Yeah. <laughs> help them out because they're going to need awesome. it. It, it, it. You're going to need it. Yeah, you got to, you got to teach them how to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. The coach. Oh, right. Yep. <laughs> we're getting banners. We're, we're getting banners made right at this moment. So our merch is going to be stocked up pretty soon. Nice. Yeah, banners there is sick. Banners there is sick. There it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Uh, you made those, Sharon. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Classic, classic. That's a good idea. Wow. Cool. The hex. Yeah, the hex. That was, I, I went on a rant one time. Um, <laughs> and it was, it was, uh, I was just so just, God, like, why is everyone like bugging me about these cassettes and all that? And I went on this like massive rant and all that. And I'm like, you know, and I, I'm gonna make you pencils. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, Mary came up with the caliber, uh, the retro calibrator uh, part of it or whatever. Then we're like, yeah, let's just do it. So, right. That's an awesome idea. Good idea. Just great. Great for us old fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> who's, the, who's the oldest in the room? I think you Henry. are, Mark. I might be. Henry, what, what, what were you born? He's, the, he's younger than me. I'm, I might be are the you? youngest. I'm, I just turned 50. Oh, all right. We're, we're about the same age. I turned, well, I'm almost 51, but I'm 50 now. So, yeah, I'm close. 51 I'm 51. Now. I'm 51. I'll be 52 in November. I'm 50. I'll be 51 in December. I'll be 52 in October. So I was born in oh. 69. Right. Oh, yeah. That's so, you're, you're a month before me. So, we're, we're very close. And, Mark, yeah. how about you? 66. Oh, so you're, you're the oh. oldest. Yeah. You're a couple of years. Three years. Not, old. The, not the age, the year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's three more years. like it. He's three years older than us. Yeah. 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 Yep. You guys want to hear some crazy shit? I talked to Scott Ruth from Ripping Corpse. Oh yeah. He's yeah. like sixty-five years old now. I, wow. I remember he was. I remember he was always a lot older, but uh, you wouldn't. You could never tell. You know, he was you know, still in great shape and like, no. you know, you know, you wouldn't know he aged at all. Yeah. But I was like, holy shit, yeah, he was about 15 years older than the rest of yeah. us. Scott, well, you wow. know, that's right. Oh, wow. You can always tell by when you talk to Scott, he was he was always yeah. much more mature than he, <laughs> you he, know what I'm saying. He, the way he carried himself, yeah, he was always a super Don, cool that, that blew your mind, huh? Don? <laughs> yeah, I because I, I mean I was I, I was I love that, that those demos in that first album well, I mean? hadn't talked to him in like five or six years and I called him out of the blue and I was just checking in pandemic stuff. Like I was just bored and I wanted to talk to somebody. I was like, oh, let me give Scott a call. See if he still got the number and he picked up. I was like, holy shit, dude. That's I was awesome. like, Scott, how old are you now? And when, when the word started with six, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I fucking bugged out. I was like, wow. I, I tell you what, and I mean, this, I'm being completely serious. Now those commercials for the elderly are, are I'm starting to get concerned. You, you know, before it was like they were just like, ah, you know, old people commercial or whatever. Now I'm like, ah, we're fine. We're, right. fine. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. He'll be just fine. But yeah. um, <laughs> well, Scott Ruth played in uh, the Beast too before that, which was that was I mean that was part of that early Mega Force because uh, on that he was on a Born to Metalize, and that that, that was you know so. He, I guess it makes sense, but still, fifteen years older than us—that's that's pretty. Wow, cool. I did not know he was. So he's sixty-four. 
Yeah, yeah something 64? like that. Wow. Mid 60s, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, just thinking back, like, you know, Ross was saying we were teenagers when we met. It's yeah. like, I literally just got my fucking AARP card. <laughs> I got mine. I, I got, got mine. mine like, like a year like, and a half ago. <laughs> do they have a metal version of this? Can I get a cool Good. card? Like, yeah, you know, and so like ARP be like A A R G ARG. <laughs> you know what? They should have something to where we can like at least get some sort of a seat at a show. I tell you, right. standing at shows, you know, Yo, like we could show like our ARG card. You know, like they could like get us a little like you know, a senior metal card. Come on, we're, we're depressing yeah. our fans now. Come on. Yeah. It's like the, uh, Ross, you just did something. You just did something that reminded me, Ross. Like this, like the the universal death metal handshake is this motion. Totally. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Invisible orange. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them. We used to talk it uh, backwards. Oh yeah, that was uh, so silly. That's how I know. Like when someone's like from like. Well, now it's kind of because a lot of people know it, but like you know, you go somewhere and all of a sudden someone says "Latum," and you you know they're like from the old days. You know what I mean? So yeah. Robin, Robin will bust that out all the time. You know, every time we're talking to Robin, she's like "Latum." <laughs> I made I made a shirt uh, like a tank top that says "Latum," and I was gonna like I don't know where it's like somewhere where you guys were, but then like when I was looking at it in a mirror, <laughs> it's just like metal. <laughs> It's like, a oh. metal. So I'm like, no one's gonna know it says Latum because their view of it's gonna say metal. So <laughs> it's a total fail. So we can't have Latum shirts. I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Oh, it's great. I still have it. Maybe I'll wear it. Aaron, and that's so great. <laughs> it's like the ambulance written, you know, backwards, you know. That's Except right. for your mirror. It's like the same thing with that. I remember when I met Ross and Bob and the Yonkers guys, like you guys were all talking backwards, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Such <laughs> assholes. I know we were just like idiots back then. I know. Then like, like I Will, Will, was, I was Will like, for Mortician, we were yeah. all doing that shit. It was just so funny. Oh yeah, it was fucking hilarious. Yeah. And then Bob was always Bob. I was Nora. Bob. That's right. <laughs> Except for today, I'm Bob Laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hat. Ross is AKA hat. Like that's right. Hat. I think that's the one you put in my computer, Bob, from the last time. Probably. But hat. Because <laughs> I saw a hat on there. I'm like, it's like, is that Bob? No, Bob's on there. Oh, that must be me. <laughs> that's great. You're like some asshole hat. Yeah. <laughs> Do any of you guys keep in touch with, with Will, the mortician? I, I would see him at shows. I don't see, I mean, obviously the last year and a half has been fucked, but prior to that, I would see him once in a while at shows. Uh, well, I went we to did his, the Maryland Death Fest, right? We yeah, definitely. that was the last time I saw him. They Mortician played Maryland uh, 2019, Maryland Death Fest, and uh, man, they killed it. It was fucking awesome. And I saw Will, I hung out with Will a little bit that day. I hadn't seen him prior to that probably since his wedding which was a couple of years before that so Will's then, married yeah he got married a few years a few years back yeah i had no idea yeah so um but i haven't seen i moved up to rochester now anyway so i'm not at a lot of the new york you know city area shows as much so i don't i wouldn't run into him as much anymore but yeah maryland i saw him so it was good to catch up with him a little bit in maryland and yeah they were good man they, they killed i've seen a video of that show it oh, sounded sick. killer yeah, incredible dude. It was amazing, dude. It was so cool to see them after so so much time. Yes, and course. man, they were really fucking good. The crowd went nuts, dude. It was <laughs> insane. Yeah, it was really cool, well, man. Yeah, they've been I, starving their fans. I mean, you know, they, they don't play shows, so yeah, fans are, exactly. You know, so it was it was cool. The excitement was there, man. Like that room was pretty much at capacity, like about 10 minutes before they even started, you know, when they were up there kind of getting ready, tuning up and, you know, getting their amps sorted and the drums set up. That room was full. And then when they started, like just like an insane pit erupted and they had <laughs> these like like these blow up inflatable like skeleton things. And it was like a ton of those. So all you saw from the back was just like this massive circle pit with all these like weird, like skeleton things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Going around. 
It was pretty <laughs> wild, man. It was awesome, man. They did really good. I was happy to see that. Yeah, it's good to see it and do well after so long, especially, you know? Totally, man. So it was fun, man, yeah. So that was the last time I think I saw him and actually hung out with him, so. I haven't seen that guy in a while, but when I left Pittsburgh, one of the first things I did was I started going back to the old Chiller Theater horror movie conventions. Yeah, yeah. And I was living in Manhattan, and the first, I was like, I'm going to Chiller Theater, and I'm going to fucking hang out with Will Raymer, and that's it. And I walked in there, and there he was. Totally, yeah. <laughs> like, Will, what's up, dude? <laughs> yeah. I and went he's to like, a party in my, he's like, party in my room, 11 o'clock. I was like, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to a few with him. It was always good fun, the man. Best. Best. That We go way back to those, so like the first ones, like way back in the late 80s. And I always yep. saw Will at the movie conventions. Yep. yep. And then um, I think the last time I saw you guys was around that time. I was lit. I was we were expecting my first kid and I came up to that bowling alley in Yonkers and Will had put, put a show together there. It was like 2003, yeah. 2004. And like Matt and all the NYDM guys were out in the lot. And I was like, yeah. I was like, wow, man, we're like drinking beer outside in a parking lot at a bowling yeah. alley. It's like 1989 again. It was so Bob, great. That's that play. I forgot what it used to be called. It used to be the old um, skating rink across from uh, on Yonkers Avenue, um, across oh. from where a where the old oh, uh, uh, transfer place. station was for the garbage, where yeah. A&D Carding used to yeah, be. Yeah, on Yonkers Avenue, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? Like, it was World Gym for a while. It, it was, was a gym, like, and then it was that club um, for like a hot moment, and that's when, remember Veg came up for that? Yeah, we I can't remember the name him. of the club, though. I don't, I don't remember. That. Yeah, I remember. I haven't seen Will in a while, man. He's definitely part of this story, a big part of it. Love that oh, guy. yeah. Yeah, Will, for sure. Will, Will was the guy I got into all the heavy stuff with. Yeah. You know, Will and I, I used to go. To yeah. The, yeah. I asked him to do the show. He just never replied back, but definitely wanted him here, you know? Yeah, that sucks, man. It would have been cool to have him on here. I mean, he, he made uh, our first trip to Europe. Will came with us. Yeah, you know? right. Going to right. Europe. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. And Will and I wound up staying with Johnny and Chelsea at their place. And Bob, uh, you went. You and Tom went to Fred from this member's house, I yeah, think. Yeah, I believe so. And yeah. Neil went with Nikkei uh, from my Entomb's house. So we kind of all split up when we went over there. So it was kind of weird. You know, but, yeah. Uh, but I, I got that. I got to jam with Will a little bit and Mortician early on before he got Roger helping yep. him out too. So I, yeah. definitely a part of the story for sure. sure hopefully, man. hopefully if we do this again, we can get him to come on, you know? Oh, that'd be great. You played a few shows too uh, you, uh, with him as well. Right, John? Yeah. I mean, we, I, yeah. With Mortician. There was the, there was the uh, 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 day of death. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I did the day show. of death. There was like two two pits. I mean, two uh, Buffalo shows. Day of Death, and then there was another one. I think with Batham, might have, not Batham. Oh, oh it was Bathame. 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 Yeah, I think it was Bathame, and I think even Incam might have played a show too, because we used to do some double shows back then, because both of our sets were so short. We only had like five, four or five songs each. Well, Mortician was like we had, I think, six songs, but I mean, it was like ten minutes or something, you know. So. You know, in can we'd play, we only had about 20 minutes, so it would be like, okay, it's a whole set to so do two bands, you know. You so I'm, I'm gonna ask a, a question that might like, I just gotta know, like, John, when you like, what's your like, your your set for incantation how many songs do you have to choose from now? Oh, I don't, I don't even know the count, but like a hundred <laughs> over a hundred. What about you, Ross, Bob? <laughs> We had, as of the last record, we counted. We had a hundred songs as yeah. of the last record, and we got like another twelve ready to go. <laughs> how, <laughs> so, how many albums does Simulation have actually? We're working on eleven, so we got okay. ten out now. Yeah, yeah. So we have eleven out in can um, albums, so we have about. Well, Don's like, got you all beat. Catalog, like. <laughs> oh, not so. Like, like how many? Like fucking a million. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys got us all beat. Would release. Well, this we're we're a little shy of 300 songs but um <laughs> as a band we know about about 60 so we 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 pick and choose what how many we're how many could you fit into a set though because they're pretty short so, uh well when jim was in a band we only got through 18 because he did a lot of talking, talking. We yeah do about of course. 22 now <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course. Hey, mark what's the rotravore catalog like how many songs <clears throat> oh god um 
Well, there was, uh, I want to say all in all, there was only uh, 14, 15, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, well, that was one out. That was with my tenure. Let's yeah. just put it that way. And then yeah. uh, Chris and uh, uh, the other guys, they they did another uh, three songs on uh, an EP a couple of years ago, you know, probably six or seven years ago. And I know uh, Chris has got some stuff that he wrote prior to that. And then in uh, 90, that was at 95, I left. And then, uh, you, you know, we, uh, formed Uvisium and then Sharon was part of that, you know. Yes, I remember. Um, yeah. That was, so that I, was I, good I, stuff. I'm still trying to get Mark to 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 do that again. Aaron, what's the <laughs> catalog? Like oh it's, yeah, it's I, I gotta I gotta step away here for a second. Mm -hmm. Um the prop thing. <laughs> no, um, uh, it's probably just like 15. You know, I, I mean I have um I don't know. I think we got like six songs in the works right now. So when, once those, well, there's one done. So you figure there was the four demo songs. Um, oh, there was the, the we did that one uh, for that um, Mad Max. Um, so that's five. And then the, uh, the later Seven Inch Darkness Fades Life. Um, and then I, on the album, I think I, I I don't know if there's eight or 10. So those, uh, you know, we're under 20. And, yeah. Let's just say it was, they were under 20, but I got like new stuff. So it's, it's, it's just, just amazing. When I look back and I was talking to Ross and Bob, when I saw them at the show here and I'm just real honest about this, I'm just so impressed with the accomplishments that everyone has had. Like I stopped making music in 95, the Revenant catalogs, like 30 songs. I don't touch that stuff. I barely play the guitar anymore, do any musical stuff. I still send Sharon some crazy lyrics from time to time and to other people um, and write metal lyrics. I still like doing that. Um, but I'm just amazed that, think about that, like we all met 30 plus years ago. Did you ever think that we would have this fucking huge library of music? And, no. You know, some of you no, guys have never. dozens of albums. <clears throat> it's, a, it's awesome. I'm never. so fucking proud it's, of you guys. It's amazing. It, but, it, but it's like weird because like like we're all normal. Like I consider like everybody <laughs> here like normal. Pretty much. You know? <laughs> everybody's pretty, everybody's pretty, pretty grounded here. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think because success never came to any of us, you know, easily or at all. You know what I'm saying? We all We're worked all really, really hard for what we yeah, got. You know, yeah. still <laughs> you know, we, we still know. struggling, you know? It's yeah. like, forget about Every the illusion worked. you see out there. I, I left it. I left it for a long time, you know? And it was Don that, that got me back into it. Because what, for me, like, I remember right when 92 hit, like everything was changing and it was like, you know, like there was like this, yeah. it, it seemed like there was like, like you could like look at like death for an example as a band, things were, uh, I remember like the thrash, uh, there was like this little bit, like a little bit of a battle between the thrash guys and death metal guys. And they were saying, well, you're only playing death metal because you don't know how to really play. And then it seemed like that kind of like was stirring up death metal guitarist and they started getting into the technical like showing their abilities and then so that was like like the, in the beginning of the 90s i would say like 92 that started happening and then there was like the goth scene happening and black metal kind of changing black metal used to just mean satanic lyrics remember that like that was like yeah, it was still like they could sound death metal but it was like black metal was just strictly lyrical content i was like no they're black metal and then black metal changed into something like its own thing. So like by the time like mid nineties came around, I didn't feel like I belonged in it. Like it just seemed like the whole death metal thing was out the door because bands were playing more technical and the kids were liking that. And, you know, the black metal scene like really took off and it into something different. Yeah. And I didn't feel like I related to it. And then when Don contacted me, and this was just like probably I think it was like 97 or 99, you were like, no, you know, people have been asking, you know, if you'll reform and all this. And I'm like, really? Because it doesn't seem like we're anything like what's going on out there. And um and you were and you made the comment like, no, they call it old school death metal. 
<laughs> and that was the first time I heard that. And they're like, old school death metal was making a, like a resurgence. And people were wanting to hear the original death metal. And I remember like that was, that was coming about towards like the end of the 90s. So then death metal seemed to be like kind of like back in style. Yeah, the 90s was a like probably mid to late 90s was definitely a weird period for death metal. Uh, it was definitely probably at its lowest point. Um, and John, you came out with us. We talked about in the last interview during the failures era, which was like 99. And that was probably, you know, probably one of the lowest points for death metal. I mean, when we did the touring for the, the second record, I was like 96, 97. It was still a lot going on, but like, it seemed like right after that, it just, just kind of went away for a while. And yeah, so it was a weird time, but we've seen those like kind of ebbs and flows throughout the years, you know, where it kind of had a lot of hype and then it kind of went away and went back underground. So I just think it's a natural course of things. You know, you, you get new younger kids, uh, you know, interested in the music and that kind of sparks it again, you know, like you see happening in the last few years, you know, there's a lot yeah. of great younger. Uh, I was just telling Mark, I think yesterday that like, I was kind of real concerned about how the scene was, but there was like, you know, some years, like when the bands are coming out, I'm like, oh, this just doesn't seem like, you know, like, like underground type of music, really. Yeah. I mean, it's extreme, but it almost seemed like almost like a new metal type of a thing. Yeah. But yeah. now the kids that are coming out, they sound like they're just like from well, our era. Well, that's because I think the younger the, the generation now that's putting out albums, I think they took their cues from like, our, like when we started, like 90. 91, 92, like those early years, late 80s to like early 90s. And I think that's where they kind of got their inspiration from. And you could see it. I mean, it, you know, when it's you know, when it translates into their music, you could see the influences, you know, like you, you can see incantation in a lot of the bands. Totally. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, you can yeah. see that. You could see a lot of the old school bands like from our time reflected in the younger bands but yeah they're doing a, it well not copying it but just almost like a nod to it you know they yeah they yeah like inspiration. They're, they're, yeah they're doing it very well yeah like well, i was surprised i was really surprised when i see like opening bands i'm expecting to be disappointed i'm like oh my god they're fucking heavy no, you know no it's 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 good so when people like knock the scene now and say ah it's stagnant is not and i i would i would uh, you know, say no lot. i'd say no i I'd, I'd say it's 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 healthy right now it's it's healthier than mm -hmm. it's been in a long time you know and there's room for not only us older bands but there's room for the younger bands you know and and it's a good mix when the touring packages mix mm -hmm. like the the older bands and the newer bands or or even styles you know when you mix like when we tour for example in europe and, and we'll support like marduk like say those tours always do great yeah. because you're blending the two crowds you know and there is yeah. some commonality between the two crowds because we all came from the same place you know so whether you're listening to marduk or immolation or incantation or immortal i mean we all kind of had the same roots so I think it, it does kind of, you know, that's yeah, that's smart marketing. That's right. that's, um, but it's good for the fans, though. I think it's always good when the fans have like a nice, diverse lineup. You know, I don't, I don't mean like you know when I agree. You, like back in the day when they would mix like you know hardcore stuff with the death metal. That sometimes didn't work back in the day. You know, maybe now it would work. It's better today. But I'm just talking about mixing like black metal and and, and death metal. It was it was it's a, it's great to do that. Oh, yeah. I think going back to the '90s scene, I think um, there's just. Um, uh we, I get, okay wait a second i just lost my thought for a second okay yeah well no i just think thinking that those um you know you had to really be kind of stubborn i think of bands like us and immolation were just a little more stubborn about you know believe we believed in what we were doing we knew because we the scene was getting really popular but i think bands like us and immolation were just still a little bit different than a lot of the other death metal bands that were coming out there's a lot of great bands don't get me wrong but a sure. lot of them you know were kind of more in the you know um, i hate to say it but almost following the trend or just kind of like doing oh. a more commercial style of death metal maybe and sure. uh, assimilation you know we were both i mean i came from the revenant days i knew about just you know you we'd have to play shows with any band possible who any band that's like <laughs> grungy enough or just not lucky enough to put us on a bill we would play so when we did really well for for like a couple of years and all of a sudden things kind of like flattened out 
you know, it was just like, okay, well, back to the trenches, you know, because we just do what we do because we love it, not because of the popularity. And you just got stubborn sometimes, you know, you like, you believe in what you do and it's worth it. It's worth putting that effort into it. Even if people don't like it, you could, you could listen to it and be like, well, I think it's good. I think what we're doing means something and it's worth something. And that's more of a reason to play music than to do it because of the popularity. Because yeah, right. no matter what, no matter what the scene is, when something gets popular, there's scene jumpers that want to be popular or want to be popular musicians. But there's also bands there that are just doing it because they love it. And they could, they could, um, you know, some bands say, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. The scene sucks or whatever. And that's fine. That's one way to look at it. But, sure. you know, I guess being from New Jersey or something, I just a stubborn bastard, you know, where I'm just like, I'm, you know, screw this. You know, I, I like, I like, I liked some of the black metal stuff that was happening at the time. I like, you know, I, I just liked whatever I liked. I didn't, it was yeah. never like, yeah. I was like a strictly uh, a death metal or a black metal or a thrash yeah. fan. It was like, whatever I thought was good. I liked yeah. so, or grind core, whatever it didn't matter. But it was, I just thought it was weird when it was like, all of a sudden it wasn't fashionable to be death metal anymore. I was like, screw that. I was like, that's yeah, lame. It was, it was it you was know? bizarre it's like it's so never it should never be I, fashionable no. mark and i were in a visium we really had some like fucked up shows remember mark like we were like yeah. booed and you know that yeah. was early yeah. 2000s and you know Evisium was as similar as like a rotrevor type yeah. band that was and, wait uh, you guys were booed yes yes <laughs> well, yeah that's rough that's and they tough. would we and, were and booed they too. would <laughs> they would uh also um okay, with the fucking on, territory yeah, they they would uh, also these younger bands um, would put uh, they would change the the schedule around and put us last mm. and yeah. um, to screw us over. Remember that, Mark? The the show yeah. I'm talking to that that Halloween one. I, got, you, I gotta uh, say that going back to this, like with Don calling Sharon and saying, "Hey, it's coming back." So for context, and just to go back to that Pittsburgh connection, like I grew up with this picture of Pittsburgh in my mind because I was absolutely obsessed with the Steelers of the seventies. They were like, yeah. that, was that, us. that was, that was it. Yeah. Mean and Joe Green. I was just going to say that. that I, was totally. <laughs> I remember him on Ragnarok or with some show like that. Harry Bradshaw. <laughs> I remember going to Ives records. I remember going around and, and checking things out and, being like, wow, this is a cool city. I like it here. So later when I left the band, I went back to college. I got my degree. I was like, you know, I'm going to keep going and try and make a career out of this. I'm kind of digging it. And I looked into Pittsburgh because I knew that I liked the city. It was a good place to live. And I looked into the school, Pitt. So it was such an important thing in my life that I had you guys introduce me to the city and then the craziest shit happened. I show up at Pittsburgh in the late 90s and Immolation's playing there on that tour. I remember that. You just kind of, we hadn't seen you in years and you just kind of rolled into that, in that venue. Suit. Yeah, we were like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember Bob gave me this look like, who the fuck is that? I think <laughs> you, like, who is that guy? He looks familiar. A little like, overdressed fine. for an emo show. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I want to throw I want to throw a question out there for everybody. <clears throat> what was the two best years of uh, not just influent influential death metal, but death metal albums? What was the best two years? Oh, I would say probably either 88, 89 or yeah. 89, 90. Yeah. I mean, those earlier mean. years, I mean. Because that's where all the groundbreaking shit came out. I mean, we have some great releases that came out in the last couple of years. But if you want to talk talk about stuff that really it was all made good. an impact, it was back then, I would say. Yeah, it was, it yeah. was all good. What I mean, like more than the, ground, the groundbreaking. What was the all groundbreaking the years? But, but like I think, those those early years, like the 88, 89, 90. You know, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, are you considering? Because like at that time, there was, it wasn't so defined. So I even considered stuff like the old creator stuff and sacrifice oh, like sure. borderline yeah. death metal. So, yeah. I mean, those are super important. Well, they were. I remember they were. getting introduced to them mostly, mm -hmm. mostly from Hank, to be honest. And um, that, you know, it blew my mind when I heard all this stuff. I, I couldn't believe it. It was like the next level of almost everything that I liked. I, I heard like the, the, 
the heavier sure. version of it or it not. was just it was like extreme like they were like so, extreme metal so yeah so oh. so uh, <laughs> so, so um someone's gonna get the case well, if you're talking <laughs> If you're talking like the death metal scene, the beginnings, I would say the, the brutal death. I'm talking about yeah. brutal death metal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, threat. If you're talking about like in general, I would agree with John, probably like those mid 80s when like, you know, Pleasure to Kill and the early destruction yeah. stuff came out and yeah. Sodom and all that were possessed, all that battery, all that stuff was just groundbreaking, influential. Yeah. And that kind of let the fire for bands like us, you know, because that's what inspired all of us. Yeah. yeah. But uh, if you're talking about our scene, I would say probably like 88, 89, 90-ish around Yeah, probably 80, yeah. 89 like, was a good year. Yeah, when, I think 89, like more, 90. Yeah, like yeah. Alters of Madness came out. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and that, and that was, it was so and, brilliant, you yep. know, like with, with Morbid Angel, like starting it off backwards. And oh, I just great. remember hearing it and it was like, yeah. and then, then it was just like a, like a punch in the face when it came forward, you know? I mean. Sick. Yeah, the whole yeah. album was like, and remember how the the demo uh, it was they changed the name. Welcome to Hell became Evil Spells or something. Is that yeah. it? Is that what it was? I think it was. Yeah, I, I forget. I, I always know about the old names. I know. Yeah, because when I hear the song, I'm always. I think you're right. Yeah, I think it was that song. I remember yeah. Realms of Chaos was another one that really kicked my butt when I heard that one. That was oh just, my god, was so heavy. Yeah. I was just Bro. like, holy crap. I wasn't prepared for Bolt Thrower. I remember Stump, like Don. <laughs> I remember we used to go over to Ted's house, and that's where we would all like, you know, get together and listen yeah, to listen. The, the the trading. And and I remember Stump saying, "Oh, you guys heard Bolt Thrower," and, and just that name, it just it was so unmetal. Yeah. It didn't seem like it would be like any like interest or whatever. And then you fucking heard Bolt Thrower, <laughs> and it was like, and I still it was like that's, a tank. That's, that's still my band. That's still my band. <laughs> they never changed. And that, that's hey, they're still, hey, still, still around. Yeah. Yeah, he's on Facebook. <clears throat> Is he? Yeah, he comments on cat. some things on Facebook every once in a while. Mm -hmm. I've seen that <laughs> years. So, Mark, to answer your yes. question, or even just to tie in what I was saying, because Dom was talking about Sharon and come back and I went to the Immolation show, yeah, and I saw John in Pittsburgh for the first time in years at a show. Remember that, John? Yeah. And I moved back to New York and I hadn't seen Don in a while. I get an email and Don, you're really good at persuading people because I remember you, you, you came, you, you were in my, I got this email and it was like, Hey man, I'm going to reissue the regurgitation demos. And I was like, who the fuck would want to hear that? Shit? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Why would you waste your money doing that? Like, <laughs> you know, because I was in regurgitation and that was kind of the band people knew me for because I played bass on the demos before Revenant really started recording and playing shows. And I was like, what do you mean people want to hear this stuff? He's like, dude, people. I don't think anybody really wanted to hear it. I wanted to hear it. You wanted to hear it. <laughs> oh, it was a great demo. I love that demo. Oh, I love Both of those. them. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, you know, the music's not really mine. I don't really have a say in it. Um, you're going to have to reach out and find some of those other guys. And that's when I started thinking, like, do people, like, if Don's releasing this, people want to hear this old stuff. Why is he re who would re-release these demos? Like, I still have my tapes, you know? And for, then for me, was for, the guy who got me thinking that, like, some of this old stuff is coming back. It, yeah. Well, for me, the, the, I, always, I always did love demos. And, in fact, you, uh, Mark brought up a fellow from this area called, his name's Stump. And uh, it was in 80, it was actually in 80, either late 84 or 85, probably 85, when uh, I, I met Stump and we were, he was, we were talking about music and he was talking about a whole bunch of bands I never heard of. And I'm like, where do you find these bands? And he's like, well, they're demos. That was the first time I ever heard the term. And um, hmm. I, 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 I was like, I got a buy. And actually speaking of the New York, New Jersey PA connection, the very first demo I ever bought was um, Phantom Warrior. Uh, morbid invasion demo and that was that was 85 if i'm not mistaken and then the second demo i bought was hatred uh drowning in afterbirth wow. both new jersey bands that was the uh, wow. song bloody guts on that one wasn't it yeah. with the little dumb like the uh, munchkin yeah, on crack and, uh, or something uh, singing for, the priest hunter and, yeah. 
I remember we used to jam out to that. That was so funny. That was, I, I loved it. And, and then after that, like the-, the How's it going, John? Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible, I right know. No, I can't. It happens once only. You have to rewind it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was, that was, that was, I just, I, I could hear bands before they actually put on a record. And I, yeah. Well, I want to say, uh, uh, it, it, Stump was uh, at least four or five years older than me. Oh yeah, he was a lot older. He's probably than now. Yeah. he's probably sixty. I would imagine right now, at least sixty. Oh, he's not, right. Oh, I'd be over sixty. I'm almost. He's five. probably over. 60. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. wow, he yeah. he loved he collected all the like the seventies. He was a like big vinyl box. collector. Remember? So he might have had the old dem the Huge. original demo yeah. days of like the early eighties and stuff too. He might have been into that trading scene. So he, that bought, was- he, he bought, like, if I'm not mistaken, I think his mother lived, or he bought the house next door or very close, you know, proximity, uh, proximity to his mom um, just for his collection. So he, was, his, he had all of his records in his mom's house. He bought the house next door. And then when, <clears throat> when she passed, he kept that house just for some of his records. Jesus Christ. He's got That's, he's got a, a lot. Yeah. Wow. A lot. Yeah, I remember and years ago. Uh, he was in all the like the heavy like seventies frog and psych stuff, you know. He's I love li- that. sitting around listening to Camel and you know, rock records. So but he did get into the early death metal. Yeah, he was definitely Yeah, he's a, he's the one of the first person that ever uh, mentioned bolt thrower. He's like, Jeremy, you got to hear this band, Bolt Thrower, you know? And I'm like, Bolt He was always, I remember he was always like so animated. Like, yeah, he was him, always. He was like, oh, did you hear this? Yeah. Did you hear this? Oh. Yeah. That's it. It was a, a very, it was, he was very infectious yeah. to be around. Like, like his enthusiasm and his love for the music, you know? His it's love good to have, for the it's band good to have people like that around. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, it was the old school record store is still there in Pittsburgh. Is I'd still there? Yeah, I is still there. I, think so. I haven't been the there. And by the, there was one by the Carnegie Museum, uh, Brave New okay. World Records. I don't, I don't know. I think, Rob, anymore. I think Robbie, that, that was Robbie's, right? Yeah, I yeah. don't think he's doing that anymore. Yeah, I don't think that one is a there. Comic book store downstairs and records upstairs. It was in a house on that little street behind. Um, Right in front of the the museum entrance, I was wondering about that. Yeah, it's three added. locations. Yes, There's... they moved once to another part of Oakland. That's it, Don. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the Don. attic in Millville. So, like, if you play uh, Mr. Smalls, there's a good record store just a couple blocks away. Mm. Yeah, that Where... church you guys played, Emulation. Oh, it sounded yeah. familiar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember. Mm-hmm. That. Just wondering what places are still around because so many places are gone. You know, it's it sucks. Well, now I, I mean, I was at Best Buy with my dad uh, not last weekend or something like that, and they sell vinyl. So you know, I think the record stores are coming back with a lot of vinyl because if Best Buy's selling it, isn't Walmart selling vinyl yeah. now? Vinyl's, Vinyl's back now. It's been back for a while now. Vinyl's, yeah. 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 If, yeah, yeah, we got it's going to be. We just submitted a new record, and it's going to be eight months before it comes out, and it's because of the vinyl, because the vinyl plan is so packed. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, I think COVID uh, pushed back a lot of that stuff. Well, that's what. That's why with uh, with with my band and all that, I'm just like, you know what? Every freaking band is going to have a release after this COVID like lockdown stuff. It's you know, like there's really no hurry because bands, in my opinion, are going to be lost in the mix with their releases because they're going to have like, yep. you know, going be a lot. Yep. Yeah, be crazy. So, so I, I can. My point is, I can stick to my time schedule. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. no, we have when, no time schedule. <laughs> I know. Like, you know, so because my friends like, we got to get it out, we got to get it out. And I'm like, what? Now it's like, what? <laughs> wait till every wait till everybody else dies down 
Well, I mean, for us, somehow we put out our new album. It did really well. I was not yeah, expecting it. I was yeah, like, you guys are right in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, because I, I was like, uh, Reed Lapse just was going to do a throwaway, whatever, you know, okay, whatever. They don't like the a album throwaway. or something, you know? So I was just like, I was kind of bummed about it, you know? But then I was like, whatever, you know, like I, I figure they don't want to lose money. So maybe they know what they're talking about. And then they did, it released and it, 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 it did, it sold like hotcakes. And I was like, everyone was actually hungry for it. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. You, know, you, yeah. you somehow, like, yeah, you promoted it perfectly like it, the right way at the right time it was everywhere like any like instagram feed facebook yeah pictures people sending me wearing shirts holding up the record but i mean i was a- i was really surprised yeah, i was surprised job. too i was just like i don't even know how this happened i'm just like i'm thinking like you know it's a lemon you know like whatever want an album's coming out whatever in the middle of pandemic, it's going to be a funnel. And then it like, that was probably the best we've ever done on an album. Yeah, I'm well. just like, yes, pandemic. There's people that are, yeah. that are several like, people oh. saying that sales are like through the roof. Like, yeah. like keep the pandemic that. going. I don't yeah. know, I don't I mean, know how, it, how it works. I mean, the I, only, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Well, the only downside to that is you can't, you know, promote it through touring, but you have a whole world of people sitting home with nothing better to do and yeah. they're looking for entertainment. So, you know, it, it is kind of a good time, you know, well, we, like to put something out, you know, we sold Shit. more records in the pandemic than we did on our last album touring, like three U S <laughs> tours, three European tours and the rest of the world. And we sold more in the pandemic. Maybe <laughs> right. on something, John. Well, that's <laughs> I think it's got to wait for the next pandemic. And then we right. put out an album again. We'll do well. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but a- anyway, I'm not I'm not happy about the pandemic. I'm just no, happy that our album is doing just well. Just to get the record straight. You're not happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, people like, out there might take bad. it the wrong way. My people might yeah, pandemic is it a bad sales thing. Sounds good. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but, like how crazy is this shit? Like John organizes a Zoom meet. I didn't even know what the fuck Zoom was before this pandemic. Like I thought it was an old school kids show on uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 13. <laughs> <laughs> Like, here we all I see talk. Ross. I see <laughs> Mark. Crazy. Go ahead. Well, what are like, you saying, Henry? I'm saying you're right, John. You don't have to backtrack on that. Like some crazy, unexpected surprises came out of this. Sure. Like, dude, hey, you hey, down the road from me. Like, whoever thought we'd end up living in North Carolina together? <laughs> you come over my house. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking pandemic. <laughs> I like, know it's a weird, it's the so oddest exactly. thing. Out, out of everywhere to move, we move right like in this. We live in the same, like almost the same area now. Thir- oh, what thirty odd. years after we, uh, you know, I, I left Revenant, I'm like living in, almost in the same area. It's crazy. Wow. We have to start a new band together now. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> been talking about stuff. Hey, I went and got vaccinated over by his house last week. Like in like this Hollywood movie tent with like soldiers and fucking you know weird shit and I'm like, what the fuck world is this? Which one did you get? Wh- which uh, one did you get? The vaccine? The Pfizer. That's what I got. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever's gonna happen, we're gonna morph together. Yeah. Mine's yeah. coming up on Friday. <laughs> Pfizer. I got the Johnson and Johnson. It kicked my ass the day I afterwards. Heard, heard does that. Oh wow. shit. That's a one. That's yeah. a one shot. So one shot. Man. Yeah. 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 What's that? We can hang out. We're vaccinated. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, that's why I wanted to hang out, you know, get it done. I, I see uh, Mark and Don, you guys visit. So that's, that's kind of that? nice. Well, I didn't hear you, sure. I said Mark and Don will visit me. So that's kind of nice that, you know, that they're, you two are like my only uh, friends that will stop by. <laughs> Well, you know, so weird as I, I was down on uh, on the alley uh, today, kind of as the crow flies, I drove probably eight miles. Pa- How close are you to 70, Route 79 right there at the Crafton exit? Oh, six oh, miles, like, four yeah, miles. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was four, literally yeah. four miles from you as the crow flies. I was down on, on the island for, for business today. Yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything else you want to touch upon before we uh, get going with this? I don't want to miss anything. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of information here, you know, I mean, a lot of history of metal, you know, so there's something, you know, I just, I wanna, wanna... I just want to tell you guys that I'm just happy to see you all. It's uh, some of you I've seen more recently than others. Mark, Don, I yeah. haven't seen 
you guys in a long time. Yeah, it was great nice. to see Mark. We haven't seen you in You're so long. Yeah, happy. you guys too. We should do this again. It doesn't have to be on a uh, <laughs> podcast. Let's, let's just do it. Let's just do it. No, no, no evidence. Yeah. There's no evidence. John's uh, recording all the evidence right now. Yeah. Let's no, all but meet it, in Pittsburgh and drink some beers and eat some food. Hopefully soon enough. Oh, yeah. We've got, we got to go oh, to the yeah, banana bro. place, whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah. That's right. It is excellent. It is we'll excellent. Meet, uh, we'll have but to it, meet at Eaton, Eaton Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah Eaton Park. Park. We'll, I remember. We'll, we'll go to Bananas and then we'll go to Eaton Park like we used to do <laughs> back in the day. That's right. Perfect. And then go but, find a place to get an Eggo bagel. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. yeah, well, uh, in the morning, we'll have an Eggo bagel before that's leaving, right. you know? Awesome. But that sounds uh, like fun. Yeah. Thanks for doing this, John. Yeah, good to see everybody. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah same it's, here. This it's, was it's, fun. It's, it's, it's really. Set it up too, or it's really, yeah, Sharon Sharon helped out with this too. It was actually Sharon's idea to do this. It was a really oh. great idea. And of course, Sharon. if any of you guys have well, any it's like, ideas. With Don, like, it's like talking to Don and talking to Mark and we're, we start reminiscing. I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, we got to get this documented, you know? And um, I don't know if we really talked so much, uh, so much on the reminiscing of, uh, of a lot of the stuff that happened back then because there's just so much of it so many years but you well, know, i'm glad so, that this this could go on for hours i mean this i know is the tip of the iceberg and we really you know only touched on a, a couple of small things i mean like yeah. you know what kind of sparked it for me was the interview that you know veg and john did you know the one you sent me the transcript for it, veg with the uh you know the, you, you mailed it to me and i read through that whole thing and i'm like wow that was just so cool to like revisit <laughs> that you know it was yeah. just fucking awesome and i wish there was like you know vi like a full that, video thing of that that would have been awesome yeah to be fair that actually kind of sparked my interest in doing this i mean i got offered to do this from for the rock fantasy files but, um, you know, just before I got the opportunity to do the Rock Fantasy Files, I had that interview with, you know, Veg, and I thought it was so cool to have that kind of, you know, old school talk. And, I, and then when it, uh, Steve Keeler from Rock Fantasy brought up, you know, to if, you, if I could help out, do some shows for him, I'm like, oh, that'd be awesome. You know, I could talk to like either a bunch of friends or maybe sure. bands that I like you know, um, are inspired by or something and just talk about metal and just try to document some of the stuff that I care about uh, sure. in music. And it's it just, you know, it's been such an amazing ride so far, you know, so yeah. much fun to just to uh, take a trip down memory lane, you know, and there's so much interesting stuff that we've all been through. And it's like, I could do like, you know, these panel interviews are great, but it's also great to do like, you know, to just, the one-on-one -on -one interviews sure. too has been great. Yeah. It's, it's everything, you know, it's all, it's all just been amazing, you know? Yeah, I would like to you're hear like, You're like Frasier now. What's that? You're like Frasier now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would like to hear more about how we became musicians. I didn't get that story. Like how all of us learned to play this music. Like, I think that would be oh. great to hear about because it's totally. just like we all figured it out in different ways. So that's yeah. maybe a topic for another time, but yeah, still you guys, something like <laughs> you, I gotta get going. I smell dinner. It smells too good. I can't do it. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, very nice. Okay, well, cool. Enjoy, well, well, see you, I, I to do want to thank man. you guys. And right, um, thank you. Yeah. Henry. John, Mark, Don, yep. Sharon. And yeah, we all appreciate it. And thank you guys <laughs> for doing this. And I want to just let everybody know that, um, you know, if you can, like and subscribe to the Rock Fantasies page and check out more of these um, shows that we're doing, interviews and stuff. And just support bands, support, you know, check out Rochevor, Immolation, Dercada. Um, Incantation. Nonslaughter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Incantation. Yeah. Nonslaughter. Um, Revenant, you know, or any of the stuff that we've all worked on. Go to the websites, buy stuff from the bands, support the bands. Don't support, you know, scammers and bootleggers <laughs> and lame ass, um, you know, yeah, big, yeah, big go companies to and the stuff band. like that. Yeah. And just, um, we we don't we don't have anybody selling anything of you know so if you see if someone selling something we have nothing to do with it so john yep keep preach it brother all right <laughs> death metal long distance death metal handshake yeah <laughs> see you guys thank right, you guys. very much right. take care see everybody see bye. all right see you guys bye take care